Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com. This will be the first in this series about web components. The idea here is just to kind of show you how to use the native web component API so that we understand how it works because then you can do all sorts of really cool stuff without having to use a framework like Angular, Vue, or um, React. And or you could actually supplement your uh, web components uh, across projects. So if you have teams that are using Angular, one team's using Angular, another team's using React, you could actually create web components that'll work in either environment. So that way you have more uniformity. So getting knowledgeable about the web component API is, is pretty useful and very powerful. Okay, um, so let's build a web component. So let me get a, let's see here, let me just get an index.html. Let me clear out some of the code here from a previous thing. I'm going to take this out for the time being. So really all we have here is a standard uh, HTML file. Okay, the only thing that I have coming in here is milligram for styling. Um, just to make things look a little nicer as we use it, but otherwise it's, there's nothing there. And then let me just clear out app.js. Okay. So basically, defining a custom HTML element all comes down to a base class called HTML element. It's actually built in to the browser API. So when you, when you want to create your own individual web component, what you need to do is extend that class. Um, so basically what you do is you just create a new class. Class, um, so call this test test. That's what I usually do. And it's going to extend HT and extends HTML element. Okay. And that there's also classes for each individual existing HTML clause. So you can actually extend H1, extend H2, extend the paragraph tag. Um, I haven't never found the need to do that particularly. I usually just find myself in a need of creating just sort of a component, a, a, a sort of a class that is an encapsulated piece of UI. So basically that will define it. Then we need to bring in the constructor. And then you need to call super because you need to call the parent constructor. And then here you can do a couple different things. Okay. Um, you can define any variables you want in the constructor. Um, but the main thing is we need to do is you can choose to have a shadow DOM, um, which would mean it has its own separate DOM from the normal document DOM, or you can choose not to, if you just want it to be treated like the normal document. So what we'll do is first we'll do it without a shadow DOM and then we'll do it with a shadow DOM. Okay, so in that case, since right now I'm not going to add a shadow DOM to actually change the HTML, the appearance of it, it would just be this dot inner HTML. And you can plop in a template here. Now we're gonna keep this really simple. So what I'm gonna have here is just um, just this, let's see here. I'll just use some back ticks and we'll just have H1, hello world slash h1 okay and then aside from that that's all that's it you have a custom uh thing so let me save that now the only thing left we have to do is that we have this class and i could actually add it to the dom i could just do like new you know by creating it by creating it as a class but i want to use it as an html tag so to do that we have to register it with with the dom the way you do that is you're going to do window dot custom elements dot define okay so again the window object that's the browser we're going to call in its custom elements property which is all the functions for custom elements custom html elements and we're going to define one and we're going to define the name of the tag which has to be two words with a with a dash in the middle so test test and we are going to choose what class gets created when that tag is used test test okay so that's what that's going to do so now I can go in here and do h1 hello world slash h1 oh wait no I want to do test test
cool. Now let's see how that looks. So let's open it up in the browser, show in file manager, and let's open up the index.html, open with Google Chrome. And there you go. See, now I can, and I can do that multiple times. I can just be like, test, test. And there we go. And now if I refresh this, hello world, hello world, hello world. Very nice. So you can do that. That's pretty cool. And that's all, that's literally all it takes to do that. But it gets more interesting when you do other things. So let's say what you could do is you can add a slot, okay, to your template. So I could add a tag here called slot, okay, and then slash slot, and then I'll put the a bunch of dash these things here, okay, save. Uh, yeah. So now what happens is you're gonna see this line of slashes after the h1, but there's a slot. A slot means any children will go there. So now when I go back to my HTML, I can do this. h3, hello, Hello. Hello. And then let's actually change this to hello. Goodbye. I'll be in sin farewell. So we save that. Take a look in the browser. Uh, let's see here. There it's that's there. Let's see, did I get an error by any chance? Control Shift I. Nope, no error. So let's take a look at what I did wrong. There's a slot. Save. It might have to be Shadow DOM. So we'll we'll try that in a second. Let's refresh. Yep, so now let's try it if we add the Shadow DOM. So the add a Shadow DOM, so basically, let me just go back to this for a moment. So the difference is, when we take a look at this right now, and I see test test, see the H1 is just right in there. And see, there's a slot. For some reason, the children aren't feeding into the slot, which is the way that's supposed to work. Um, so anything, anything that's inside between the closing and the opening tag of the component is supposed to show up wherever the slot is defined. But it's not, again, I'm thinking it may have to do with um, uh, Shadow DOM. So I'm gonna try Shadow DOM out. But Shadow DOM will actually create its own sort of special mini DOM inside there. So this dot, to do it, you just do this dot attach shadow, which means it's gonna attach a Shadow DOM. And inside, we have to choose a mode, and you just always do mode open. There you go. Just means you can inspect it. I'm pretty sure that's what that means. Cool, but now it's no longer this dot in, inner HTML. We have to add that HTML to its shadow DOM and has a separate shadow root. So this component now has a shadow root, and I attach it that way. Okay, so it's the same idea. Except everything now it's literally like it's its own special DOM. So and if I use like document get element by ID, it won't be able to find things that are in that DOM. So let's see here, save, now I refresh, and see now it works, so yes. For slot to work, you have, you have to have a shadow DOM. So if you wanna use slots, you gotta use shadow DOM. Now you can see the shadow DOM in the browser here, because see now you see shadow root. And then when I open it up, okay, I can see the stuff that's inside the root, which is that in the slot. Now notice H3 is not inside the shadow root. Okay, so that's something to keep in mind that if I wanted to use, if I wanted to get access to that H3, it's still part of the document. So I can either try to use the document, like dot, document dot query selector to select it, or I'll have to use um, some interesting things like this dot shadow root um, dot query selector, 
I have to choose the element and then you have to choose dot slotted children I forget the exact syntax I had to use it for one of my components um, but there's their syntax for that so if you to grab the the slotted uh, elements and then you have to go there and then do this oh no no you have to select the slot element so you have to actually do like a this dot shadow root query selector slot and then do dot assigned children which means all the components that are in, that are filling in that slot and then that's an array of elements that are in that slot so it's a little tricky to grab the stuff in there but that's the way it works and styling it you have to keep in mind as well is a little bit different so if I wanted to style this so let's say I want to slap a style tag so usually if I'm going to do style, I'm going to do some styling, what I'll do is I'll create a separate variable, this.style, and then here I'll do a style tag. Okay. Um, now if I want to style that slotted h1 or that slotted h3, I have to kind of anticipate that. So what you have to do is you have to use this slotted, okay, a slotted and then in parentheses, you use what element it's going to be. And what is it? An H slotted H3. So any H3s that are slotted will get the following styling. So we're going to say color is now going to be orange. So the font color will be orange. Let me close the style tag. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to inject this into the HTML with interpolation. OK. So that way the style tag appears before all that. I will hit save, refresh, object CSS style declaration. Uh, let me see here, where did I make a mistake? This.style, this.style, and that should interpolate there. Let's take a look at the underlying HTML shadow root. Uh, why does it think it's an object declaration? Interesting, it's not usually how it works. Might be just because I it's broken into two lines. So I'm gonna do this. this out and just stick it to the front of my template string here okay so now it's all one string save refresh and there you go so you see that slotted pseudo selector that's how you grab the slotted elements so even though hello goodbye farewell are not technically part of the component they're slotted into the component I can still style them um, which means you can make components that style with the components so if you wanted to do like styled components that's kind of the trick you would use for that but yeah other than that you could just create you can add functions okay so you can sit like any class you can add a bunch of methods um, you can do whatever you want but essentially that's how you create a web component so that's all there is to it now I've created a whole bunch of features so that way you just don't have to worry about it so if you head over to uh, Alex Merced, so I should just do it over here. Alex Merced Coder, JS Lib. Here you'll find a bunch of libraries where you can make life a little bit easier for yourself. Okay, so for example, out of the get-go, things like state props are not built into this. So if you wanted to use the, the props, the properties of the attribute, you would have to go fish them out. Okay, um, there's easier ways, but I made a function that literally will just grab all of them and give them to you as an object. Makes it real easy. Um, state, I have, a comp I have a base element that has state already built in, so you just have it. Um, so you don't have to reprogram those things. It's not super hard to do, but why redefine the wheel? So if you wanted to use those, they're all here. Okay, the simplest one is just a basic element, which is just a base class that's going to have reactive state and props and nothing else. Anything else you'd have to add. But that way you have a very nice plain canvas to work with. Um, everything else gets a little bit more complicated. 
Um, I start adding things like global state and a bunch of other really cool bells and whistles. So generally all the different component base classes are in this library component zoo, plus some pretty cool, like I mentioned, the styled components. I have a base class for doing those. There is um, a, um, a component for routing, a component for um, forms, for working with forms. So component zoo really has everything you would need. Um, which includes basically all the good stuff from all these other libraries. Okay, Merced Element, which is a base class that has all sorts of bells and whistles, including state management like Redux, along with state and props. Uh, Chain Element has global state, but it works a little bit differently. And then there was Basic Element. And Fun Component is a function that will create the component for you. So it actually takes this and makes this simpler. Okay. Um, so you have those available to you. So now you understand how to make a web component from scratch, but you can sit there and do some crazy stuff if you've used the tools that are already available to you here in my JavaScript libraries. Um, probably the easiest one to get started with is just plain basic element. It's actually less than one kilobyte. And there's videos. So I'm gonna put this in a video playlist about web components. And basically after you watch this video, you know how to make a web component. It works. This is literally all you have to do. Um, but then you, all the other videos will show you how to use those libraries so that way you can leverage that and do really cool stuff with web components. So I'll see you guys later on. Again, uh, my name is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com. Have a great day and enjoy. Mm -hmm.